lab 09 low coding as a tech lab In this lab, we need to uh, complete all the tasks, lab environment setup task, and uh, the uh, tech tasks. Uh, please uh, read this lab manual carefully by yourself first. The lab covers these uh, topics DNS and how it works, DNS server setup. DNS cache poisoning attack, spoofing DNS responses, packet sniffing and spoofing, the scapy tool. First, uh, let's uh, set up the lab environment. We already downloaded the lab setup zip file. Uh, lab09. This environment, there is a router connect this uh, local hardware network to the internet. I use a local DNS server and a attacker's name server. This is an attacker. You are, you are already very familiar with the container setup and the commands. Let's uh, go ahead and bring up the containers. The attacker container it has a shared folder, volumes. It works in a host mode for its network. Here's a summary of the DNS uh, configuration. Local DNS server, the configuration, are saved in this file etc bandname.conf and options the lab is simplified and all set up for us for example the DNS servers now or today they randomize the source port number in their DNS uh, queries in this lab to make it a uh, simple the source port number is affixed to uh, this number. And the DNS sec, the countermeasure used against uh, spoofing attack as the server is uh, turned off. And we can check the DNS cache with uh, this command or ndc dump db dash cache and clean or flush the DNS cache. So for each task after you run, uh, please remember to flush the DNS cache. And for the local DNS server, the forward zone is set up to forward forward the DNS query to the attack to dot com zone. See this uh, zone entry dot com. And the user container or the user machine is already configured to use this uh, local DNS server as is uh, as its uh, primary DNS server is configured in this result.com. Uh, on the attacker's name server, 
there are two zones the attack is the two.com the attack is legitimate zone and the other fake example.com zone so here are two zones this is the attack is legitimate zone and this is a fake uh, example.com zone after we bring up all the containers we need to test the DNS set up to make sure they worked there are two uh, tests first get the IP address or this ns.attackset.com with the digger command second get the IP address or this uh, www.example.com Here you see with this dig command you can specify the names the DNS server the name server which one you want to use by default it will go to its, its official name server with a setup you can also uh, query directly uh, to the ns attack set2.com that's a malicious DNS server. Go back to the layout, the network layout. Here, user dot file local DNS server dot fifty three attacks name server dot one fifty three, and it uh, hosts the attack set two dot com. It's a legitimate zone. This is built to build all the images. This is up, bring them up. Okay, here they are. The attacker name server, attacker and router, the local DNS server, and the user machine. We will work inside this uh, tab. Let's open uh, one, two, three, four, five tabs for each of these uh, containers. User right, this is a user machine. Let's use the techniques we used in our last lab to make it more readable. Change the port. Let's see. This is a user. This is a user machine. To the local DNS server. Attacker's name server.
and the attacker Order the last one. Uh, this is a user machine. You can check its uh, local DNS server or primary DNS server. You can see uh, it use this one, the local DNS name server as its uh, primary DNS server. The local DNS server. See the IP address. Dot five three. And uh, on this server, oh, there's so many uh, configurations. So configuration we want to find. We just verify all the settings. Let's have a look for the settings. Let's attack a shared folder and a host mode for its network. It can be verified in its doc file. The local DNS server, we can check the configuration. To verify these uh, settings, these are the uh, configuration files and the zone files for this uh, local DNS server. Here you see uh, the file include the option local default zones and this uh, forward zone attacks32.com forward to this uh, malicious name server. In the options So in this uh, options file, you can see the DNS sec is turned off, and the credit port number is fixed, and its uh, cache file is under this location where cache ban dump dot db. That is the name dot conf dot options. We know the sort point number fixed DNS sec turn off and DNS cache is uh, saved in this file. We can have a look. Currently, uh, not there. We need dump or in DC dump to be cache to 
done with cash then you will see that dump.db is generated we can check the content Uh, this content also is a dump dot db here you can see these uh, same columns they are all comments and uh, currently we don't have records mapping a domain name to IP addresses right that are all comments To claim the cache, we use our NTC flash. Currently, nothing saved in the cache. So, this is how to claim it. The dump.db file is still there, uh, the, the same as this one, because we didn't uh, dump it again. The forward zone, we want to see it in that uh, options store file. So the options file. And we will also check the user machine. It use this machine as its uh, lo the local DNS as its uh, primary uh, DNS store. Uh, on the attacker's name server, Go ahead, we can find the two zone in this uh, name.com file. It's an uh, attacker's name server. Yeah, you see these uh, two zones. The legitimate, leg uh, legitimate attack site to .com and the fake example.com zone. And the zone files, oh, we can go ahead to check those zone files. For example, it's a legitimate zone attack c2.com here it is and the fake zone example.com the fake zone this is a fake zone pay attention to this uh, www dot file and this uh, Example.com zone is this IP address, and anything else is this uh, IP address. And the name server is the malicious uh, DNS server. On the attacker, let's go to the volumes folder. You'll see there is a template provided to us DNS sniff spoof dot pi we will use this one as a template to complete all those uh, attack tasks now it's time to uh, test the DNS setup we already verified those configurations on the user machine get the IP address on this ns.attackset2.com with the dig command and to make sure it's uh, forwarded right. the local DNS server will forward the request to the attack name server and it hosts it hosts uh, this legitimate zone so it will return the, its address 
on the user machine attack site2.com going to get the IP address okay here it is you'll see the answer section to the IP address is the IP address of the malicious uh, DNS server the next one uh, we want to get the IP address of the example.com this one we need to uh, issue two queries the first query it will go to its official name server okay here you see its address IP address you can also use online tool to find this uh, example.com its IP address here I put uh, let's look up online tour you can check it here you get this address the IPv4 address and you can also see a uh, name server no record You can compare this IP address with the IP address we got here. Right, exactly the same. Now let's uh, use dig command. Specify the name server we want we want to ask for. Right. The second uh, test. Here you see uh, there is a fake address right? on the section with a fake IP address. When we ask this um, malicious name server, we we'll get a fake IP address. Now we can check the cache on the local DNS server. First, uh, we dump the DNS cache. Then we can check the contents. Scroll up. You see there are lots of information now. You can use grep to find the information you need. And now you will see a. Uh, I want to go through this uh, file a little bit. Let's go to the top here. Do you see these uh, root servers? As we discussed during the lecture, you know, a query is sent out recursively to the root server, then to the top level domain server, and so on. There's a root server. You scroll down, you can find the top level domain server for the dot com.
then you scroll down you'll find uh, this one is uh, from uh, the malicious um, DNS server here the example.com this is a legitimate name server right the example.com when we issue dig uh, www.example.com to get from these two name servers there are some, some uh, additional records here now we get this uh, legitimate answer and it's a legitimate IP address IPv6 Okay, to uh, get what you need quickly, we use grep. For example, we want to find that uh, those uh, records contain example. Uh, you see uh, the information here. Example.com from the uh, legitimate name server and this. Uh, Website, it's IP address. We found uh, the results. Well, we, the results are cached. The so next time when we dig this uh, information again, they will be uh, fresh from the cache right away. And we will see, see it later. Here you just dig it again, you will get result right away. And we see both the legitimate uh, records and the fake records. The fake records, we didn't see it here, right? records is because we just uh, ask the malicious uh, DNS server right away we didn't go through this local DNS server so that uh, fake records is not cached Okay, now let's go through these uh, attack tasks. The first task one, task one directly uh, spoofing response to user, which means we attack the user directly by sure the DNS request it send out to the local DNS server. Then we fake a response and send back. The illustration of this attack here is task one. We attack the user machine uh, right away. Sniff the DNS query, then spoof a response and uh, send back. A Python framework with Scapy is provided. What we need to change is the uh, I phrase argument. Every time you uh, run your container, this string could be different. And also, you need to set up the field in section four. Program framework is given, so we will use that one. We are asked to. Uh, Sniff this example.com domain and as a name a 
uh, go to the volumes. I would like to uh, make a copy. Let's create a task one. Okay, we want to modify uh, task one. We are asked to uh, send the example. Here the credit sent out is this one. Dot uh, com. So we change this dot uh, max dot com. We can also print out this uh, packet dot show show when you sniffed uh, this uh, packet you swap the source in the destination IP address swap so destination port number to make the response to fix the response to the answer section here we are asked to uh, Spoof a DNS response, which means we make a fake IP address for this uh, domain name. Task one, let's just use a uh, one dot one. Use this one as task one. The IP address for the for this uh, domain name. We only need to uh, fix answer section. So for other sections, we can just get rid of it. For solid section, additional section, and uh, we will use it uh, later in other tasks. In task one, we only need the answer section. And construct the DNS uh, packet. So this uh, authoritative uh, section and the additional section, we don't need it. So their corner will be zero. Only one uh, answer section here. Then you Construct the entire IP pack and send out, send the spoof pack out. Here is a sniffing. Now we need to uh, change this uh, I face. Since we want to uh, attack the user machine, right? so we can add. Source host from the user machine. Here's the user IP address. And the destination port number, which means the user machine send out um, UDP query packs, we sniff it and fake us. Then we need to change the interface. We, we run this program on the attack machine. Go to the attacker. Here's the attacker. Here's IPA. Now which one we need? There's a find from the IP address, right? This one is uh, in this interface is in the face to the local ad network. So we need this one. So 
So you find this address and uh, find the interface. Please find yours. Yours uh, should be different from mine. Command S, save it. Okay, it's saved. Now let's run on the attack machine. Run it here. Before we run it, uh, remember every time you need to clean the cache on the local DNS uh, server. Flush. On the attack machine, run task one. Dot pi. It's running. Then go to the user machine. We send out dig example.com. Pay pay attention. This is a legitimate IP address. Now, if a uh, attack succeeded. It will get this fake IP address. So let's run it. Here you see it get this uh, fake IP address right away. So it will receive the fake IP address from our attack. Here is the attacker sent out one packet. Here is a package it uh, sniffed. See the sniffed uh, packet. It is sent from the user machine to the local DNS server. We focus on the DNS port. It's a query. Uh, access forward IP address. Or this uh, domain name. Now you can check. Uh, uh, oh, this is task one. We succeeded. Here, before launch the attack, make sure that the cache in the local DNS server is cleaned. Otherwise, it will get the answer from the cache. Because if the cache has answered the reply from the local DNS server will be faster than the one you spoofed and your attack will not uh, be able to succeed. We want to clean the cache before our attack. So if you failed, you need to make sure did you uh, clean the cache. But it's still possible you have another problem, a potential issue. This potential issue said the seed group they uh, met a strange situation, which means the spoofing inside the container is very slow, and their spoofed packs even arrive later than the legitimate one from the internet. How do you solve this uh, temporary? Here, the method provided is to slow down the tra traffic going to the outside with the traffic control. Yeah, the network traffic control. You can delay the network traffic by 100 milliseconds. So, if you cannot succeed, it could be cause of this problem. So, let's uh, set it up in the router. Yeah, throughout uh, this uh, lab, we only use this router for this adjustment. You can use DCQ disk shell to show the parameters in for the 
traffic control, DAV ETH0. The router has two Ethernet interfaces. This ETH0 is uh, faced to the outside uh, network. ETH1 is faced to the local area network. You can uh, check them here. This IP A. This is uh, ETH1. You see it. Uh, interfaces to the local area network where ETH0 it uh, interfaces to the out network and what we need to uh, modify is the ETH0 TCQ disk show Oops. Q disk. Q disk no no Q zero root IF counter two. Those are traffic control parameters. If they are use default values, they are not show up here. If you want to delete one, you use TC kill disk DLO DLVTH0 for example uh, net EM invalid kill disk name delete the TC entry, TC Q disk. Here, DV ETH uh, zero. So which one is uh, invalid? Because we didn't uh, set this entry, so we delete just say in one Q disk name. Let's see, we set it first, then delete again. TC Q disk add DV it has zero root net here. We add it first. Delay 100 milliseconds. Then we can show it again. Right. Show the V it is zero. And you see it is added. This time we can delete it again if you don't use it. Right. Now this time the delete succeeded. Okay, if you have the problem in your task one, add this delay. Uh, the delay is added. Can show it. Okay, it's over there. No. Let's go to uh, task two. The DNS cache poisoning attack. In task one, we attack uh, the user's machine. So we need to attack the every time the user machine sends out the DNS query. To achieve a long lasting effect, we try to poison. DNS cache. We already discussed this in our lecture, so you read it, please read it by yourself as a 
refreshment. Once you complete your task, you can verify whether the DNA's cache is poisoned, poisoned or not by check its cache. First, again, we will flush its cache. Yeah, on the local DNS server, it's already flush and flush again. And on our attack machine, let's stop it. Can you see? Stop the attack. On our user machine. Okay, how do we construct the attack? Now, we attack the local DNS server, not the user machine, right? In task 1, we attack from here. Now, in task 2, we attack from this place to attack the local DNS server. So when the user machine query that exam.com is sent to the local DNS server, Every time it needs an IP address, it is, will send out a DNS query to the local DNS server. And since we cleaned the cache in the local DNS server, so the local DNS server also need to uh, query, send the DNS query out to find an IP address. Then we can sniff and attack at this place or make a fake response. So we need to uh, work that here. Okay, now let's uh, copy task one. Make a task two, dot pi. Open task two. All right, this time we attack the local DNS server. How do we change it? We don't need to change anything here. Right? We sniff the DNS packet sent out from the server and uh, fake a response. So what we need to do is intercept the DNS query sent out from the local DNS server. So to change the source host here, which means the send out from the local DNS server is this IP address. It's 53 here. Right. Now save it, Ctrl S, save it. Okay, it's done. Now let's run the attack. On the attack machine. Task 2. Okay, it's a sniffing now. On the user machine, again we dig this uh, domain name. As enter, we get a uh, fake IP address. And you also see it take uh, several, uh, one or two seconds, right? And on the attack machine, you see the sniffed uh, packet. This packet, you can check here, the source. 53 is sent is sent out from a local DNS server. It asks for the IP address of this domain name. 
and we send out the fake packet. And the fake packet, we want to check whether the fake packet is cached in this uh, local DNS server or not. We can dump its cache. Here we already know on our user machine, we see our attack succeeded. But the purpose, we want to see whether the cache on the local DNS server is poisoned or not. So we run this uh, dump db. Then we can uh, check the grab the example. Here you see uh, this example.com. It still ask for this legitimate uh, name server, right? The name server we know is a top level domain name server. We see at the beginning of this lab. However, this uh, domain name you see is poisoned with this fake IP address. Even we stopped our attack. Yeah, can you see stop it? Actually, we don't need to stop it because you can always see. We don't uh, need to stop it here. Right? Task uh, two dot pi is just send out one packet. So we can dig it again and to see after after the look DNS server's cache is poisoned and the rabbit is cached, then the local DNS server will check the cache first if the record is in the cache, it will return right away. It will not send out DNS query. If it send out DNS query, it will be sniffed by our attack. Right? So let's have a look. We dig it again. When I dig it this the first time, uh, the previous time, it takes about uh, two or three seconds. Now you see this time I press enter, I get the result right away. And you can check the attacker. Here you see a uh, right? task tool, which means it only still only uh, sends just one package with our previous attack, which means no DNS query is sent out from the local uh, DNS server. And it uh, gets the result from its cache and send it back to our user machine. So our user machine uh, gets the result right away. And this local DNS uh, server cache poisoning attack and uh, the effect last much much longer how long it lasts in the time to live you can find the time to live of that cache the DNS cache poisoning attack but we, you still see the name server right is from the legitimate name server now we want to also attack this part. We want to use the attacks malicious name server. Yeah, the attacks malicious name server attack name server. If we use the attacks malicious name server, then you can attack the example.com domain instead of only that uh, www.example.com right? on the spoof the NS record it only affects the previous the task two only affects one host name you will want to uh, affect all the sub host name under this example.com we need to uh, spoof the name server record So now let's uh, construct an uh, attacker to attack the name server. 
and we want to specify the name server to be the attacker's malicious name server instead of the legitimate name server. Currently, it uses a legitimate, uh, legitimate name server right here. Now, how do we uh, create this one? We want to uh, add an answer to this uh, authority section to specify the name server. So the task three. If uh, we succeeded, then the user dig for other. Uh, domain name under this domain example.com for example mail.example.com or anything else ftp.example.com they should be uh, attacked and uh, got a uh, fake IP address so what's the fake IP uh, address provided by the malicious name server we checked before right here you on the malicious name server you see it here for example.com you get this IP address for www.example.com you will get this IP address the name server point to the malicious name server and for any other domain name under example.com you will get this IP address so let's have it Task three. Uh, please use uh, tasks because um, tasks except task one uh, attack the user machine. Task two, three, four, five. They all they all attack the local DNS server. Text three to pi. Right, task three. We also want to fake uh, names or sort uh, section to specify the name server. What we want to specify is this. Right, from the template here, the template there is a authority section. Copy it, paste it here. Here is example.com. I want to attack this uh, domain name time to live so many seconds now you see uh, how long it will live in the local DNS server cache the name server we want to specify is this uh, as attack city2.com Attack set to we need to uh, modify the construction this time name server count one. And we also need this one.
hard pass. We don't need to change it. Conversion necessary. Okay, it's saved. Now let's attack it. See whether we can uh, get fake IP addresses provided by the malicious name server. Attack set2.com. We also check the cache on the local DNS server and see whether the spoofed NS record is in the cache or not. Go to the attack machine, stop task 2. Go to the local DNS server here. Local DNS server. Flash the cache. Then go back to the attack machine, run task 3, go to the user machine, please pay attention every time we need uh, dig this uh, domain name to trigger to trigger this uh, part so which mean, which means every time we dig this uh, www.example.com not a uh, domain name now you see it take uh, two or three seconds again we get a fake IP address, so it looks like our attack succeeded. You check the attack machine, right? one packet is sent out. Again, it's sent out from our local DNS server. Ask for the IP address of this uh, domain name. And it got our fake uh, IP address we supplied. The fake IP address we supplied with this IP address. Now it's recorded in the cache of the local DNS server. So we can dump the cache, check the cache content. Do you see it here? This is a fake IP address for the domain name and also the name server. Now, the malicious name server is recorded in the cache. So if we dig for other IP addresses, uh, dig for other domain names under this uh, example.com, it will send out to the malicious uh, domain, uh, the malicious DNS uh, server, and the malicious DNS server will reply with these fake IP addresses. Now let's have a try. On the machine, for example, we dig. Which one you want to dig? Here you see this www. Do you, do you think you will get this one? It will not, right? Because this one is already in the cache. The DNA server will check the cache first. It will find it, it will use it. So if you still dig the example.com, www, you still get a one dot one dot one dot one. So if you dig just example.com, You will get uh, this one. Right? Get uh, one dot two dot three dot four. Now you see all the sub uh, domain name and example.com are controlled by the malicious 
dead so or controlled by the attacker then we will dig some other stuff ftp.example.com we'll get a 1.2.3.6 we'll get this if you dig this one what do you get you can check the cache you grab attacker here it only has this one as a name server for this uh, example.com so how do you think if you uh, dig as dot attack set two dot com. Here, if we dig this one, it's not in the cache, right? So it will be sent out. Once sent out, it will be ac accepted or sniffed by our attacker that is our attack however our attacker is only triggered by that uh, domain name www.example.com so which means you will not uh, get the fake IP address for the malicious domain name server let's uh, verify our uh, sort so we take this uh, as dot attack dot com. You get this one, and then right away, and here you see a. Uh, Certainly, this will not be triggered. The task three will not be triggered. But why is not a uh, send out as we just discussed? It is sent to the malicious uh, domain name server because uh, that forward zone in the local DNS server. So it, that's why actually it is sent out. But it is sent out to the domain server. So it get the IP address of the machine server right away. You know that a uh, forward zone in the local DNS server no? at the beginning. Here. This forward zone forward to the malicious server. Uh, domain server so this uh, is task 3 known task 4 we want to spoof NS records for another domain for example for google.com to see whether the attack succeed or not which means whether the uh, local DNS server's cache will be poisoned or not. Right, task 4. Copy task 3. This one as a trick, as a trigger. Scroll down. We want to add. It's another authority record. Or Google.com. You can just copy this one.
please make sure how many uh, empty space you have one two three four one two three four google.com uh, we only change this part and also we need to change the as count now we have two Here is two. Can just see. Can we paste here? If you want to see the packet you send out, you can also print out here. Spoof pkt dot show. If you want to see your fake uh, DNS reply, okay, that's it. This is the number two five nine two zero zero. Is it here? In the attack machine, can you see stop? Now we want to run task for before that. Clean the cache on the local DNS server. Flush on the user machine again. We we need to dig www.example.com to trick the attack. Task four. On the user machine, we oops, dig dot com. Press enter. You see, we succeeded. We get a fake uh, IP address, but this time we want to see whether this uh, Google dot com will be cached or not. This is task 4, the purpose of task 4. Here you check the attacker. We print out the two packets. The first package is a packet uh, sniffed, a sniffed packet from the local DNS server. And it's ask for the IP address of this uh, Domain name. This is a spoofed reply, the fake reply right, to the local DNS server from this uh, source. And the port number is fixed here. This domain is a 53. Here is a answer. Right? One dollar, one dollar, one dollar. And, and the name server for exam.com and for google.com. Okay, now let's check the cache. Here. First, uh, dump the cache. Then we grab attack attacker. Here we only see uh, example.com. We didn't see google.com, which means uh, this attack didn't work. It if we want to add another domain, it, it does not uh, work. So this task for 
extra field just does does not work. It's not uh, cached. the last uh, task task file so we discussed uh, those uh, reasons why it does not work during the lecture so we need to review by ourselves now let's uh, go to task file here if you want to grab example uh, you still see is all similar to our task uh, three. If you want to see Google, you get nothing. Right. Uh, let's uh, flash. Stop the attack. Go to the user machine. Now the task file. We want to spoof records in the additional section. In this additional section, we want to provide IP address or some uh, domain name, for example, the attack say to dot com, Facebook. We want to see whether they will be cached or not. I copy a task four dot pi task file dot pi. Okay, we need this one as a trigger. In task uh, File. We want to add additional sections from the template. See how to add additional adding records to the additional section. Copy this one. Can you see? Can we paste here? We need to add three, right? Let's see. Can we paste here? What are those records? Here we will ask us also to change the authority section like this example.com. This time use uh, nsexample.com. So in the authority section, change the second record. Right. We provide two name servers, two name servers for this domain, exam.com. One is from our malicious DNS server, the other one, do you think you have a name server or a legitimate name server like this? You can uh, ask uh, the online tool here, DNS uh, record, to see whether it exists or not. No, there's no uh, record for this one, which means it uh, does not exist. As a fake uh, reply, we can put any information we want. So this the authority section for task file, the additional section for task file here. First one is
as dot attack say two. Second one is as dot example dot net. Type address file six seven eight. The last one Facebook. So in task four, I missed uh, there is a dot I, I missed. So you can add uh, the dot. The task for I missed those uh, dots. So actually, uh, you will see identical result with or without the dot, but uh, it's better add those dots here. See, I also missed a dot here, task 3. Task 2. Here you can also add a dot. Here I don't add a dot, it's, it's fine. Facebook. Fake IP address. 3.4.5.6 Ctrl S save it. We also need to change the construction. Now we have three additional records. Two NS record. So for the additional record, one, two, three. So what's the name? parameter scroll down from the template right the template here it is on the C Oops. Oh, it is a freak DNS packet. One answer to authority records, three additional uh, records. Again, we attack the local DNS server. Can you ask save it? We want it uh, flushed. The local DNS server. On the attack machine, run task file. Press enter. Now on the user machine, again we need to dig this uh, www.example.com. Press enter. You'll see it takes about three seconds. We get the fake uh, IP address on the attack machine. You see this uh, fake uh, reply right? on the Facebook for asexam.net for this uh, attack set2.com. And for the name server two records for this domain name. Okay, now we check the cache to see whether these additional sections or these additional records are cached 
or not. So go to the local DNS server, dump the cache first. Then you can check Google no attack is there. Example is there. However, you see this one as dot example net is not in the cache. Attack set two with this IP address is also not inside the cache. Right? So here, which have attack, this one is not inside. Example here, this second additional record is not cached. Now you check Facebook, certainly it's not inside. So which means all the three additional records are not cached. Your job is to report uh, what entries will be successfully cached and what entries will not be cached. Please explain why. You see all these uh, additional the additional records are not cached. How about these two? These two you, you can see when we check example, only this uh, this one is cached. NSExample.com, this one is cached. And this uh, NSAttackSet2.com is not cached. In our uh, task uh, 4, this one is a cache, right? Uh, as a uh, tag set two is cache, but this time the second uh, name server is cache. Here, the second one is cache. This two, we want to add two name servers for this one, but only the second one was cached. To report what entries will be successfully cached and what entries will not be cached. Explain why. Why did this happen? Okay. Refresh your memory we discussed during the lecture. And we com completed all the tasks. Now let's stop all the containers from the right to the left by press Ctrl D. Here, but this one, the attacker, you need to press Ctrl C to stop the attack and press Ctrl D. Ctrl D again, Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D. Now you need to CD to the lab setup to run DC down. Okay, everything is uh, cleaned up.